Okay, Laura J. Here this morning to say I have a lap of history. And all of these are ideas that I wanted to share, including one about beginnings, where it says the distance between inertia and beginning is so vast that upon contemplation, it appears too large to cross. When we do begin, we make discoveries. We discover strengths and hopes, dreams not yet lived, beloved hiding places and parts of ourselves. We wish nobody could see. It is much safer not to begin. What if you began a dream and it didn't work? Or if you were no good at it, or it didn't satisfy you the way you'd always imagined? What if you began and quit? No, but that one. We can begin over and over as many times as we want or need to. We can begin to change our beliefs and the ways we categorize ourselves. Oh, I've never been a good, what? Begin again. I'm going to begin again. A person who easily tries many new things. A person who is sometimes irritated. A person who explores new tastes. A person who travels lightly. A person who I will continue to add new beginnings to this list. Begin whatever it is. If it doesn't feel nourishing to your soul and spirit. An 11 year old girl just left me this message on my phone. Sark says, who wrote this, not me. You remind me that my differences from other people and the way I do things aren't weird, they're succulent. This is from Transformation Soup by Sark. Begin it. And this actually comes from 2009 when I worked in London at St. Leonard's and was teaching a Time to Think program to young offenders who were in conflict with the law because they had got caught and convicted of something that they didn't know how to contest and then had to be part of a program with a facilitator like myself at the time and actually learn about cause and effect and different positive programming and such to make sure that they didn't repeat offend. And so I wanted to actually read the goose story that I had included on the other side of the page to begin again. Beginnings is what it was called. Begin again is what we say. Begin it, begin again. There we are. Amazing. <laughs> They've gotten used to seeing me. That's what happens. We see familiar points on our route. And then if we get a little energy charge from a certain place, then we look forward to it. It's like, are they gonna be there? I wonder. It's really cute. I love it about sitting outside as an outdoor office. And like, this is my view. Can you believe it? It's just like, wow. And beyond grateful, truly. So. Next fall, when you see geese heading south for the winter, flying along in a V formation, you might be interested in knowing what science has discovered about why they fly that way. It has been learned that as each bird flaps its wings, it creates an uplift for the bird immediately following. By flying in a V formation, the whole flock adds at least 71% greater flying range than if each bird flew on its own. People who share a common direction and sense of community can get where they are going quicker and easier because they are traveling on the trust of one another. Whenever a goose falls out of formation, it suddenly feels the drag and resistance of trying to do it alone and quickly gets into formation to take advantage of the lifting power of the bird immediately in front. If we have as much sense as a goose, we will stay in formation with those who are headed the same way we are going. When the lead goose gets tired, he rotates back in the wing and another goose flies point. It pays to take turns doing hard jobs with people or with geese flying south. The geese honk from behind to encourage those up front to keep up their speed. 
What do we say when we honk from behind? Carla Wilchuk yesterday at a rally in Edmonton, Alberta, that I had the privilege of calling in to do a short presentation for. A rally, rather. I don't know. A cheer. Just simply to say, here, here. We are in this together. And it is time for us to understand that each of us are the only us there will ever be. Therefore, we need to fully actually be who we came here to be. No exceptions. We cannot afford to allow that which maybe no longer serves us to remain if we can simply change it easily, which we can and must. And what Carla Wilczek with Carolot, a property her father purchased and she has uh, continued doing good works of community building on that property for. Carla had said about she had a sticker on her bumper that was about honk if you care a lot, I believe it said. And so people were honking from behind or honk for freedom, honk for liberty. I can't remember what it was, but it was a message that we all need to hear. And so she was getting honked at and she liked it because it actually repurposed honks. You can also tell the intention of a honk oftentimes because it's like some, somebody's angry. It's just like, that's not a really gentle, nice honk, excited, fun. Yay! Right? Like that's fun, but that's not fun. Like that's, there's a force and an energy of anger and venom and ugh that comes at you when somebody means for it too. So I just, share that because she repurposed honking in her proximity by changing how she received it because of what she had put onto her bumper to then change how others interacted with her. And so if we actually applied that principle to our own lives, what would happen? That is what I wanted to share that point for. Finally, now I want you to get this. When a goose gets sick or is wounded by gunshots and falls out of formation, two geese fall out of formation and follow him down to help and protect him. They stay with him until he is either able to fly or until he is dead. And then they launch out on their own or with another formation to catch up with the group. If we have a sense, if we have the sense of a goose, or we, if we have the sense of a goose, we will stand by each other like that, author unknown. I cry because I didn't take that advice and I did not go and see my own family because how everyone seems I feel because of the stories that I've created in my head and also had conversations with only my two closest relatives on that side that basically I am a threat, a liability, and they're afraid of me that I might be the contagion at the party. And I haven't had conversation with the others since I went through the mental health system and I didn't hear from anyone. And so there's a lot of my own stuff that I have to get over yet and my own family who don't appreciate the wild one in the family. And so I say that I didn't go to my family because I didn't feel like being the odd man out that people were actually afraid of that could be blamed if anyone did get sick. And so I did not partake. I stayed back and I worked on things that will benefit all of us because right now we are at a turning point in humanity's history and we all know it and I am emotional right now because it matters and then tears are the heart overflowing with emotion we've gotten so uncomfortable with them 
that we don't know how to hold space for each other to have an emotional experience without trying to stop them from the discomfort they're going through. And we have to stop doing that in order to allow someone to go through their own sacred unfoldment. Yet we also can't blindly watch abuse and say that it is okay because we have been told not to say anything. That is not okay. I remember after I got out of the mental institution, after two and a half weeks of being locked up against my will or wishes or consent, except for I didn't know how to claim my rights. So my consent was given because I hadn't expressed myself in a way that made someone liable, not a system, but a individual a man or a woman, personal liability is what must be demanded of. And I didn't know how to do that then and now I do. So watch out. I just about made that one rhyme. If you can stretch your mind enough to reach for what that could have been. It was a little bit of fun. My mind is quite divine. I am grateful. I'm grateful to be me, truly. It has taken 33 years for me to be me, to sit here and say, even though I don't have a book, I am still good enough. And what has ultimately taken me through the ringer and back of the sacred sojourn of the soul, which is my version of the hero's journey from a soulful perspective. It truly rewrote me before the world got to see the version that now I can write because I've actually got experience from having been through the fight of reclaiming my sovereignty as one who is able to self-express and self-govern that need no physician to grant approval for a wish or desire that I can express and fulfill myself if I am free to do so. And if I am not free to do so, who says I cannot? Man to man, woman to woman, man to woman, we stand opposite one another when we actually land in the present moment and call ourselves to account for our choice to fulfill and execute orders that may eventually come with lives at the other end of those, which is already underway, which is the crazy thing. And people say, oh, Laura, you're crazy, which by definition is different. So I don't contest that specifically, so long as there are not any implied implications that would make that a negative statement that could cause trouble for me that I do not consent to. And I now understand how important it is to apply consent or lack of consent to that which is said to me, by me, or around me. And so I am doing my very best to command myself nobly, to actually make it so that I prioritize the higher level needs instead of the lower level needs in Maslow's hierarchy. And that is what I would encourage you to do. And it became so clear to me yesterday, which is tomorrow's yesterday is today. Tomorrow's yesterday is today, right now, in this moment, what we choose to do with what we know. What we choose to do with what we know is where we go. And when we go, we have to know that we will be supported. So long as we call to higher forces that will not assist us unless we make the call because that would interfere with our trust, that would interfere with our free will. And the higher beings will not interfere or trespass against anyone's free will to choose because they understand that that can create karmic debt for them and they 
won't take that on unless they are called to, asked to. Please call. We have to call. This sign I know is connected to the Illuminati and there will be some that say, oh my, is she connected? Well, no, I'm not religiously connected to anything. I have come into the teachings of the Ascended Masters in the Summit Lighthouse. And I'm grateful because it's put a lot of things into context where I can hear what people have been saying and people do say to me, and then I can just see it from a vertical perspective instead of a horizontal one, like what we've been trained. And when we look at it from a vertical perspective, we bring in the chart of the I am presence, the chart of the divine self, which actually has a tube of light around us all the way up to the I am that I am, which is the picture of God that each of us brought to this world in order to be able to bring down. And what we bring down is actually the Christ self the anointed one, the golden halo of awareness, because we have actually went through the sacred sojourn of the soul in order to gain access to the wisdom and insights that helped us wear the crown of awareness. That is spirit. Matter is will, desire, to give birth to. We need the will. That is what makes us human. Q with an extra E for all Q's included and common E for energy that we choose to direct intentionally towards something that will serve us instead of the truth that is coming for us. I believe that technology is more advanced than what we have been made aware of. I believe that we have access to resources that we have not been made aware of because we have not asked. I believe in the Socratic method of remaining in the power position by asking questions. I believe in myself. I believe in the power of the human spirit. I believe you have not done all that you can do yet. I believe that we each have a commitment. I believe we each must do our part. I believe it is our responsibility to actually ask the questions responsibly through written notice so that there is no longer any plausible deniability because if we put all of the small percentage on notice who are purporting this mistruth that is then misdirecting all of those who observe the tell lie vision, see how the distractions fly around me in that moment when the lies of the vision they would like for us to see then becomes what we either give our attention to or take it away from. Think about it, but not just stay there because that is how mental health has been used as a tactic to keep us stuck up here. Did you realize if you were in your head, you were out of your heart? It is the greatest 18 inches. And the fall was actually said to have come when we fell out of our heart and into our head and stopped learning how to seek resonance with the moment, with truth, with what it means to be who and whose we are. And so this was a longer message than intended, and yet I hope it was exactly what you were looking for this morning. And if you were not looking for it, and yet you sought it or stuck around for it, I wonder why, what did you get? Please leave a comment below to let me know. I do read all of them, and I do love to create content around what you contribute. So please do let me know what's going on for you, what this message means to you, for you, what you're going to do with it, what it made you think of in a different way. And also as you go through my messages or anyone else's for I am just a mirror to all the rest too. When you have an idea that comes to you while you're listening to something that is being taught, prioritize what comes through you 
rather than what has already been written for you to transcribe. That is how we tell a new vision. And that is what we must do with real eyes that interfere with the not see plan of not being able to see the truth so far as we have come to ground it. Lord J. Namaste, Namago. Thanks.